Let's talk about layering colour pencils, but not only how you layer them, how you layer them if you haven't got a huge array of colours. I want to focus today on how to layer if you've only got a set of 12. First up, what is layering? Layering is where you gradually build up the colour with a series of very light layers of pencil. Layering is essentially how you mix up the colours. You put one colour on top of another and they gradually blend to make a new colour. Now I think it's going to be simplest if I talk you through a drawing and show you how I go about building up the different colours. So I'm going to show you by drawing this rosebud. Now as I say I am drawing this only with 12 pencils and in many ways I think it makes it a bit easier to see what I'm doing. Now before we get started with the actual drawing if you would like to draw this rosebud with me it is available on my Patreon. My Patreon is full of a whole variety of tutorials in both colour pencil and graphite pencil and for every drawing I I include full in-depth instructions, all of the real-time footage, sketch outlines, details of all of the colours I'll be using and of course the reference photo. I like to include a mixture of some shorter drawings, so some drawings that can be completed in less than two hours, as well as some much bigger, more impressive drawings but they do take a lot longer. Do check out the link in the description. Alright, let's have a look at this rose. Whenever and whatever I'm layering, I always follow the same rough rules. I like to generally start from the lighter colours and work my way towards the darker colours. And I begin doing this by putting down what I call base layers. So what I want to be doing here is very lightly drawing everything out, mapping it out and giving myself something that I can work with. Now because I'm working with the set of 12, I haven't got a huge array of colours here. So I'm just going to look at each area of the rose and find kind of the closest colour to each section and put down a very light amount of that colour. The rose itself is pink, the closest colour I have to pink is red. So what I'm doing is very, very lightly mapping out the lights and darks with this red, mapping out all of the key shapes. Now the absolute key thing here is it needs to be really light. I like it to not only be light but also be really nice and smooth. Now there's a few ways I go about making it as light and smooth as possible. To help me make it light, first off you'll notice that I'm not holding the pencil really close to the tip. I'm holding it probably about halfway down. That is because if I hold it back here it literally stops me from being able to press too hard. By holding it back here I'm not able to be as accurate but I don't need to be hugely accurate at this point because I'm just roughly mapping everything out, roughly mapping out the key shapes. The other thing I'm doing is working in small little circular motions. So kind of circular oval motions, which is gonna help get a really smooth, even amount of the pencil down, which is all part of making it as smooth as possible. And the final thing that I'm doing here for my base layers is making sure that my pencil is really nice and sharp. The sharper the pencil, not only the easier to control, but I find the pencil just goes down in a much more consistent way. So you'll notice that here, because I am needing to be a bit more precise about my base layers, I am holding the pencil closer to the tip on this part, but I am still pressing as lightly as possible. As I say, and I can't stress this enough, the key to layering is to be as light as possible. You want to be able to put down a lot of pencil on the same area of paper and you can only do that if you press lightly. If you go in really hard with the pencil, you're not gonna be able to build up the same amount of color. Now, I don't wanna put the same base layer down for every section. Each section of the rose has a different base layer. So the rose itself, as I mentioned, is pink and the stem is, on the most part, green. I'd say some parts are green and some parts are brown. But for now, because I'm just focusing on base layers, I'm focusing on the leaves here, I'm going to block in and mark in their shape with this green pencil and that's the whole point in layering is that we can adjust the colours later. This is the closest colour I feel I have to these leaves. Now once again you'll notice that I'm going about this in exactly the same way. I'm not holding the pencil really close to the tip which is helping me press really nice and lightly. I have a nice sharp pencil and I'm working as smoothly as possible. I say that the stem is green down to about this point. Then from here I can think about moving on to a slightly darker pencil to mark in some more of the shapes. This still isn't about getting the perfect end colour, it's just thinking about which colour kind of is next. So for example on the leaf here, it's a little bit darker on either side, so I can use this pencil to just darken down each side, still light 
slightly going over the top of what I've already got to very gradually start building up and layering up that color. Do exactly the same for the leaf in the middle. And I just gradually work my way around, very lightly building up extra of this color. And then on the actual stem, the stem is more of this brown color, I would say, than the green. And it's darker on the right hand side and lighter on the left. So I'm just gonna build up a little bit more color and put down a bit more base layer on that right hand side. I'm still not pressing hard. I'm just going over it a few more times to build up that color. But this is all still very much part of building up the base layers you'll notice that it all looks very muted in the colors because we don't want to go in really hard with any of the pencils at this point we want to give ourselves a lot of leeway to build up other colors I think the main thing to take note of with layering is that it's a very forgiving way of drawing you get lots of opportunities to adjust what you're doing either with the color by adding more colors over the top you can really significantly change a color but also you can change the shapes quite easily because you're putting down the pencil so lightly to start with. So back to the rows at the top and I'm still wanting to build up some of these base layers. I'm still working from the lighter colors towards the darker colors. And here I'm using, a, this is the magenta pencil. It's kind of a purpley red and I'm using it to go over a lot of the shadowed areas. So although the rose is mostly pink in the more shadowed areas of the rose, it has a little hint of blue. So using this color because it's kind of purpley seems like a good one to use at this point. And then once I've gone over and built up a little bit a lot of the shadows I can then again carry on working towards the darker colors this is still the base layers at this point I can start thinking about adding in the darkest shadows so this is the walnut brown it's like a very dark brown to just put in those darkest areas. Now I can't stress enough that I am still working very lightly and we will be until the very end. But I can just gradually build up this color. Now you'll see where I'm putting the brown over where we've put the green before and that lighter brown. It's kind of looking like it's covering a lot of that up. It's looking a bit kind of flatter, but that's okay because we can build up more colors over the top. It doesn't matter. In many ways, I think that the base layers are the hardest part of layering and the hardest part of any drawing because you're mapping out the key colors and the key shapes is where it's kind of most likely to go wrong I guess once you've already marked a lot of it out you're really just building on what you've already got I think it gets much easier so the final thing for the base layers is to go over the absolute darkest parts very lightly with the black I don't generally like using the black particularly for sort of natural objects I think it's a bit harsh but we will put more colors over the top of this which will tone it down a bit so at this point I would say that the base layers are done now what we want to do is to keep building up on top of all of these colors and as I say, I think from this point, it does get a lot easier. So now I want to focus on brightening everything up and generally adding all of the missing colors. So I like to look at my drawing compared to my reference photo and think about which colors are missing. So right now I can see some elements of purple, quite a light purple in a lot of the, particularly the ends of the petals. So I can use this light blue to go lightly over the top and you can see how much it changes the color of the petal, even though I'm not putting a huge amount down. And I can just work around all of the petals, putting down the blue anywhere I want to add a hint of that purple. So I guess the only thing really to be focusing on when using fewer colors like this is you need to think a little bit more about color theory and the color wheel. So you have to bear in mind that red and blue make purple and you may not have an amazing purple in your set, but if you have a red and a blue, you can make a purple. Same goes for if your green is looking not quite yellow enough, you can think about adding a yellow to a green to slightly change the color. You just have to be a little bit more imaginative, I think. So I can keep going over the whole of the rosebud, adding in this blue. And once I think that I have added in everything I can see in the reference, I think it's lost a lot of its kind of pinky red. So I can go back to the quite bright red and fill in a lot of the areas that I did with the base layer. But because it's gradually building up, it is starting to look more vibrant. So I can go back over all of those same areas again, putting down more of this red 
red and that changes what we've got here. So at this point, I think a lot of the darker, more shaded areas are now not looking quite dark enough. They haven't got enough contrast to them. So I can switch back to that very dark brown and start adding this in on just the very darkest shadows. So particularly around this petal here, for example, where it folds over and in between a lot of the folds at the top up here. Now doing this, I think is taking away a little bit of the kind of ready pink tone. But again, that's okay. We can always add that back in in a minute. But you can see how quickly the vibrancy does build up. So let's fill in some more of the darker shadows down the bottom as well with that same darker brown. And then I'm not completely happy with the general color down here. I'd say I'm pretty happy with the level of contrast, but the underlying color isn't right. What I want to do is add a lighter brown over the top of this. So I can once again add this brown over the top of this area. I have already added this brown in on the base layers at the very beginning, but it all got a little bit lost under the darker browns and the black that I added here. Now I do find that the more colors I build up, I do have to start pressing slightly harder just to get the pencil to show up. I'm by no means pressing hard, just maybe a bit harder than I was to start with as that color builds. So once I filled in a lot of this brown, I'm once again wanting to think about the most obvious color that's missing. So now on these leaves, pretty much all the green has been lost. So I want to go back to that same green we used before, go over the top of these areas, and it's just slightly adjusting the stem here. And then actually I'm thinking that the green doesn't look like quite the right green. It needs to be made a little bit more yellow. So I can put some yellow over the top of that and maybe add a little bit of a bright red into the stem. And then I can go back to that lighter brown, add some more of that in slightly adjust and tone down the green again and then go back to really making the dark areas look a bit darker I think that they're not looking like the contrast has been lost a little bit so I can go back to that walnut brown fill in the same areas again and you'll notice I'm really just flicking through the colors and gradually building them up now you will see here that I am pressing quite a lot firmer because I have mostly put down the colors that I want at this point I can press a little bit firmer just to kind Kind of smooth everything out and you'll see me doing that a little bit more with a different color in a minute so let's tweak some of the contrast up the top with this same brown as well before once again going back to the red and brightening things up again but then maybe that's a little bit too red it's a bit too much of a bright red and I want to add a bit more of a slightly purple tone to it so I can go back to the reddish purple the magenta add some more of that over the top before then thinking maybe that's not quite blue enough and all of that blue that I added earlier on looks like it's been lost. So I can go back to that light blue and once again add some of these cooler tones back in. Now the more that I add in the colors, the firmer, as I've said before, I need to press. And when I am happy with everything I have got in an area, what I generally want to do is blend it. I want to smooth it all out and blend it all together. And I do this with some Thing called burnishing. So burnishing is where you press a lot firmer with the pencil. Once you've finished all of your layering, you press much firmer and it smooths everything out and sort of finishes it off. Now I'm using the white pencil here to burnish because I want this rose to look pink at the end. I want to blend with the white so it lightens everything up. And once I'm happy that everything's all smoothed out and burnished, maybe I want to add a tiny little bit more color. So maybe just adding a a little bit of red over the top and maybe a little bit of brown as well to slightly adjust that color. But that is essentially how I go about layering. Starting off with some very light base layers and kind of mapping everything out. And then comparing my drawing to my reference photo and thinking about which color is missing. Allowing myself to gradually build up that color until the very end when I want to burnish and smooth everything out. Now don't forget, if you want to draw this rose with me, it is available on my Patreon. Now I have briefly touched on burnishing in this video, but I haven't gone into a huge amount of detail. If you do want to learn more about what burnishing is and when you should use it, check out this video here. As always, happy drawing guys and I'll see you in the next one.